All right, so this lesson um, allows is about really about how to factor more complex polynomials, and it's using um, building upon what we did last day, which was uh, the synthetic division and long division, mostly synthetic division. Uh, and so this lesson is really about factoring, and it's called the factor theorem. And the factor theorem uh, is states that if you're dividing, uh, or I'll put it this way. If x plus a is a factor of some polynomial, then we know that if you put minus a into the polynomial, you're going to get out a 0. And remember, that means there's a remainder of 0. Essentially, this is just a use or a consequence of the remainder theorem. And so if, if x plus a, again, a can be a negative number, so it's like x minus a. But if x plus a is a factor of any polynomial, then if you put minus a into that into the x or the input for that particular polynomial, you know you're going to get it a 0. And that allows us to quickly check if something is a factor. Um, now, another, then the final theorem is this integral 0 theorem, which is, again, if x plus a is a factor of a polynomial, then that minus a must also be a factor of the constant term. And we'll use this again in a moment. And like the last lesson, if you're looking at this video before you've tried any of it in class, We'll be front loading a lot, and it may seem a bit overwhelming, um, but then it should make a lot more sense in class. Uh, like the last lesson, this is something that most students pick up really, really well, um, but it looks kind of weird at first. So what I want to do is I want to factor this. Now, if you want to factor any polynomial, the first thing you should always check for is the greatest common factor, but there is no greatest common factor here. However, always check for that. For example, if I could take a factor of x out of everything, this would become quadratic, what would be left, and then we, can, we have lots of options dealing with quadratics. But there's no co greatest common factor. So what I need, essentially need to, need to do first is I need to make a guess about what is a factor of this. But not just any guess. I want to make a guess by looking at the constant term. So that's my constant term. And so I have to make a successful guess as to what is a factor of this. And I make that guess by looking at the constant term and thinking about, OK, what are the factors of 3? What numbers multiply into 3? Uh, what integers multiply into 3? Well, plus or minus 3 and plus or minus 1. That's it. There are no other options. So if there's going to be a factor in the form x plus a that I can factor out of this, and it almost certainly will be, then I know that plus a part must be at least one of these. So I now have only four possibilities to start by making a guess. And so I need to pick one. And let's make a guess, I don't know, uh, one. OK, let's make a guess. Actually, I'll write it over here. Let's make a guess that x plus 1 is a factor. Right now, it's a guess. I don't know. Um, but I know 1 is a factor of 3, which means it's a possibility. For example, I know x plus 2 is not going to be a factor because 2 doesn't multiply into 3. So how do I check? Well, I don't want to do synthetic division. I just want to take minus 1 and replace all the x's in a calculator with minus 1. And I know if I do that, the number that comes out of my calculator is the remainder. And if that remainder is 0, I know I have a factor. So now I'm going to go to my I'm going to go to my uh, Desmos calculator here, and I'm going to type in the polynomial. But everywhere there was an x, I'm going to type in a minus one because my guess is that x plus one is a factor. So let's see, uh, two times negative one to the power of three, and so on. I'm r typing out my entire equation substituting x with negative 1. All right, so what I have there is my polynomial uh, that, I, that I was starting with. And notice, it equals 0. So I didn't, that was, honestly, that was a lucky guess. I didn't actually have an answer key here. So, um, but it's not really that surprising. There's only four possibilities, and you know, probably more than one will work, um, unless all the factors are the same. So there, now I know. I know with certainty that by putting negative 1 into x, I get out a 0. That means 0 is a remainder of a factor of x plus 1. And so going back to here, I, this is no longer a guess. I now know that x plus 1 is a factor. Perfect. Oh, here's an announcement. Caesar, are you able to see Paul down in his office, please? Caesar, please see Paul in his office. Thank you. 
All right, I'm glad you all heard that. So now, now that I know that x plus 1 is a factor, I don't want to forget about it. I'll kind of highlight this right here. I know that. Now let me factor it out. Let me pull out a factor of x plus 1. And how do you pull out a factor of x plus 1? Well, either long division or synthetic division. Let's use synthetic division. And so I'm going to write down the coefficients of my polynomial. And over here, I'm going to put negative 1. Right? Um, I just don't want to forget that I now have a factor. And so now let's use my synthetic division. Let's go through the process of synthetic division. Now, if I make a mistake here, which is pretty easy to do if I'm talking <laughs> while doing all this, um, I should be able to check it because my remainder won't be 0. Notice at the very end, I got a remainder of 0 right here. So I'm pretty darn confident that I must have done this right. Um, if I make an error with my arithmetic somewhere here, I won't get a remainder of 0, almost certainly. And I kind of I know to stop. OK, so now what I have left right here, what does that represent? M remember, that means 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. So I've taken out a factor of x plus 1, and I have this left. So let me factor this. Now, to factor a quadratic like this, there's lots of ways of approaching it. I generally recommend first multiplying the 2 and 3 together to get 6, or positive 6. And thinking, what are two numbers that multiply to positive 6 but add to negative 7? Um, negative 6 and negative 1. Add to negative 7. Negative 6 and negative 1 multiply to positive 6. And so these aren't my two factors. I'm now going to take this 2 here and divide each of these by 2. And I can see my two factors now. My two factors are x minus 3 and 2x minus 1. And again, what I just did there is factoring. You learn in grade 10. You use it a lot in grade 11. Like I said, I don't really care how you get to this point right here as long as you do it and it doesn't take you too long. I mean, with that said, uh, I've done all my work. So let's answer the question. So what are all the factors of that original polynomial? Well, the factors, if I factor it fully, uh, if I factor it fully, I'm just going to write my three factors, x plus 1, which I don't want to forget about, plus these other two I found, in any order. So x plus 1 times x minus 3 times 2x minus 1. And so the first one was my guess that I happened to get guessed correctly right away. The other two did not require any guessing. It doesn't matter what order I write this. Um, you know, as long as my factors are all correct, it's all good. OK, so with that said, really what we're doing here is using what we learned last day to factor these polynomials. And in this case, I had to make, I had to make a guess. I had to make one correct guess. After that, there was no more guessing. And so for this example, if I have a quartic or a fourth degree polynomial, I'm going to have to make two guesses. Uh, and so. For this, uh, my first guess is looking at minus 8. And i got to think about all the factors of negative 8. So there's going to be more possibilities. So plus or minus 8, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1. That's eight possibilities. OK, now i got to pick one. Let's go with, let's try again. Let's try a guess of what I did last time. Let's guess that x plus 1 is a factor. Okay, right now it's a guess. How do I check if my guess is correct? I go to all my x's here, and I replace them with negative 1. And if I get out of 0, I know I'm right. If I don't, I know I'm wrong. All right, so let's see. Let's go back here, and let's clear this. And type in my polynomial now. If everywhere there was an x, I'm going to put a negative 1. So this is going to be very thrilling to watch. And there you go. If you look at the side of my screen, this equals 0 again. And so in this case, I didn't have to guess. You know, My first guess was correct, I should say. And so that's great. So I now know that, if I look back here, I know that x plus 1 is a factor. So I'm going to get rid of that, equals, that question mark, I mean. All right, so what, I would, what do I do next? I pull out the factor. I divide out x plus 1 from what I have here. And again, synthetic division is by far the fastest way of doing this.
And again, if I make a mistake with my arithmetic, I will notice it in a moment if I don't get a remainder of 0 at the end. But I got a remainder of 0. So good. I kind of confirmed what I have is correct. So remember what I have here means x cubed minus 6x squared. Uh, actually, you know, I'm going to write it off to the side. Um, you know, this means x, I'll do it like this, x cubed minus 6x squared plus 6x, 12x minus 8. That's what it means. So what I have to do now is I have to now make another guess. And I now can look at just this part, this constant here. What's a factor of that? Uh, you know what, this looks kind of messy. I don't like how messy that looks. Maybe you don't care. I do. All right, so I'm going to write this now as, yeah. All right, so now I want to look at this minus 8. Well, the factors of minus 8 are the same as I uh, had before, so I can make another guess. Now, it is possible for me to try x plus 1 again. That would mean that x plus 1 is a factor that repeats twice. So let's try that. Let's try this again. Let's try another guess of x plus 1 is another factor, I'll say. OK, let's just see. And so I'm now going to go and type this equation into a calculator and see if I get out uh, uh, 0 again. So let's see. So. Clear that. And again, some more thrilling video of me typing in a numbers into a calculator. So again, I'm now typing this into the polynomial, the cubic polynomial I got when I divided out that one first factor. But this time, I get a remainder of negative 27. So lo and behold, my good fortune of always picking guesses that worked has come to an end. Oh well. So I know that what that tells me is that x plus 1 is a factor, but it's only one factor. It doesn't repeat twice. Oh well. Let's pick something else. Um, how about let's pick, uh, I don't know. Let's try, a pos I want to put a positive number in here. Let's try. I guess that x minus 2 is a factor. Which means, I, if that's the case, I have to put positive 2 into my equation. And I'm just going to save the time and tell you it works. Okay? If I replace x with positive 2 into that same equation right here, if I replace all those x's with positive 2, uh, I will get out of 0. Instead of you just watching me type numbers into a calculator. I hope you believe me. So now I know a second factor. x minus 2 is another factor. So now let me take that out of this right here. And so I'm going to set up my synthetic division again, write down these same coefficients I have right here that I'm highlighting. And this time I'm dividing by x minus 2, so I'm putting a positive 2 right here. And now I'll do my synthetic division. And again, if I make a mistake, it should become quite obvious in a moment, but I haven't made a mistake. My remainder is 0. And now right here I have another simplified polynomial, and this means x squared minus 4x plus 4, which I should be able to factor without making any more guesses. In this case, find two numbers that multiply to 4 and add to negative 4. Well, that's kind of pleasant. That's x minus 2 times x minus 2. And so I'm done. All I got, well, I'm done my work. All I've got to do now is look back and think, OK, what do I have? I have a factor of x minus 1, I have a factor of x minus 2, and two more factors of x minus 2. So I have four factors, but three of them repeat. And so if I write this in fully factored, I can say, therefore, when this is fully factored, I have a factor of x plus 1, and then x minus 2 three times. I'll write it like that. It's not wrong to write out multiple times, but that's a bit faster. And that's fully factored. All right. So the last part um, is a question in which I give you a graph and I give you a cubic polynomial. 
And I want us to find all the exact intercepts for this. This is a problem that I think I'm going to just leave um, because I really I'm hoping we can have a chance to do this in class. All right, um, but that's it. If you want to try getting ahead, you know what do you have? What I have right here has been graphed. That's what you see in blue. So this is f of x, and I want to know all the exact values, not just estimations, for all the x and y intercepts. So that 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 and that. What are all those exact values? So that's your task. Now I will say um, that this is a question that if we forget something, we make our life needlessly harder and it can become really quite tedious. But I don't want to say more than that. Uh, I do want to wrap the video by saying the last lesson in this chapter has to do with connecting the factors of these polynomial functions to the graphs. Um, kind of like what we did in the very first lesson of this in the first notes of this chapter. Because um, the last few lessons have been more focused on the algebraic mechanics of factoring things or dividing things. Now we kind of go back to the graphs of things. And so the chapter kind of comes full circle. And so I'm done. And so.